Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Karen's Kitchen with another recipe. I'm not too sure if I've ever done gravy before. If I have, hi, Becca. Good to see you. I'm Shorty McFly. Um, I don't know if I've done gravy before. If I have, this is a total different recipe than I've ever done. So, um, hi, good to see you. So I wanted to uh, do it in front of you. It's going to all have to be done on the stove, and I'm going to have to lower my lower my thing down on my my pan or lower it down so you can see the pan on the stove that's that's a good trick to do i'll tell you that you won't i won't be able to see the comments too well but you should be able to see the pan i'm going to add first of all i'm going to add two two cups of broth vegetable broth and this is organic broth add that in there i'm going to follow my directions um three quarter teaspoon of onion powder i've already got that measured out Put this on. Start this up. Medium. Okay. Um, <clears throat> three tablespoons of nutritional yeast. I'm telling you what I'm putting in here as I'm putting it in here. Um, welcome to everybody coming in. And thank you for sharing this out. And I'm going to share it out myself in just a minute. A lot of people won't use the nutritional yeast because, because of the yeast in it, but I still use it as much as I can. Um, one tablespoon of soy sauce. I don't use regular soy sauce, but I do, I do have a soy, uh, an alternative I use, and that is um, you can use soy sauce or tamari. I have li Bragg's Liquid Aminos, which is, the, which is a, a, a soy sauce alternative. So it's, it's very, very good, so I use it. This doesn't take very many ingredients at all, <clears throat> so you'll be able to watch me make it. Um, I'm leaving off the mustard, and then it takes a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, or you can use brown rice flour. I didn't have any made up, so I use my all-purpose flour here. You can also probably use tapioca starch or whatever. I put that in here, and then I just you just whisk it. It's not. <clears throat> um, it only takes taste it. You got to bring it to a boil, but I'm going to keep stirring so it doesn't get get stuck. <clears throat> um, don't uh, that I'm in Oregon, but but that's derogatory to say granny. Please do not use that term. That is that is that is. I'm not, I am a grandmother, but you don't have to talk in that tone. That's that's derogatory. Um, please, and you've got get my. I'm gonna share this out while I'm thinking about it. That's okay. It's just I don't think that that's appropriate to do that. Do you need to be a little bit, you need to be a little bit um, more, you know, I'm an older person and that affects me quite a bit. So just be kinder. And I'm going to share this out on Facebook and I'm going to share it out on Twitter. Um, when I do that, my screen goes black for me, but you'll still see me on the other end. So there we go. All right. Um, oh, <laughs> delicious. Absolutely delicious. I had, I had some for breakfast this morning, and the cookies I made were very good, too. Now, this I have to bring to a boil, and I just keep whisking it. Let's see what it says. Just have to whisk it until it, it thickens. I, it hasn't come to a boil yet, but I'm just going to keep doing this until... So I, so I make sure that it doesn't... Uh, um, you know, get have any lumps and everything in it. Oh, you know Indian food? Uh, <laughs> oh, welcome to everybody coming in. Well, hi, Fred. Good to see you. Welcome. I'm just, just now starting my gravy. Um, I've got, and I can tell you what I have in here, Fred. I'll get my... What I have in here is three cups of vegetable broth. I have a three-quarter tablespoon or a teaspoon of onion powder, one, um, three tablespoons of nutritional yeast, one tablespoon of soy sauce, but I don't use the actual soy sauce. So I, do, I use Bragg's Liquid Aminos, which is a soy sauce alternative. I left off the Dijon mustard because mustard, I don't use that, and a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. So that's basically all this has in it. Um, 
Yeah, I do. I cook vegan food. This is that's why it says vegan on it. So people probably don't know that, but I do cook vegan. So hi, Arlene. I didn't see you come in. Welcome. So welcome to everybody that's coming in, my moderators, and everybody that's here. I don't know if this, if I like, I said if I've done a vegan re a gravy recipe before, but I thought I would do this, and because it seems simple enough. Um, you could probably you could put it on mashed potatoes. You can put it on uh, a baked potato if you wanted to. I don't see why not. Um, you can put it on the gravy and it'll keep pretty well in the refrigerator. Oh, you're <laughs> you're here for Wally. Yeah, I know Brandon as you run up and down the road. <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah, I've done lentil soup before. Yes, I I've, I've done lentil soup. But I choose in here when I come in here what I want to fix. So I I happen to see this and I thought I'm just gonna. Um, fix this because it's simple enough. It doesn't take very long and it's real easy. And uh, hi, Cheryl. Good to see you. You can see me stirring my, my pan here for my gravy. And I got to keep whisking it till it boils and when it gets real thick. Because we know the flour is what thickens it up. But this is got a, a, going to have a different flavor to it. I don't think I've ever made this gravy before. I found it, I think it was on Pinterest. Um, oh, made from lentils. Yes, I've, I've, I've made lentil soup before. Well, you can put gravy on, you can put it on mashed potatoes. You can put it on a baked potato. Um, so, um, you can use it for anything you want to use it for. So it, I haven't had my lunch yet, but this is going to go on if I, if I make potatoes later, mashed potatoes, because I had a late breakfast, so I don't want to have an early lunch, uh, you know, lunch right now. So, so I, I'm going to, you know, fix this, and then I'll, I'll fix my lunch afterwards. As you can see, it's getting hot, but <clears throat> it's a simple, it's a simple gravy, and I'm one of these kind that I like to make things simple. Um, yeah, there's a lot out there, you know. I know when I go into Pinterest, that's what I look for is vegan dishes. Um, I don't look for anything that's not vegan because I am a vegan and I won't change that fact. You know, um, I understand when everybody comes in here, <clears throat> they're not vegan. But, you know, it is for everybody, but they can choose to become vegan if they want to. So if they don't want to, that's fine too. But um, I made desserts the last couple of days, so I want to do something a little bit different. You know, use something like, you know, make for mashed potatoes or baked potato. Um, I know what that is, but no, I have not. Oh, uh, yeah, he's, yeah, I know, he said he's from India. Yeah, they got, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I ascertained that by some of the things he was saying that he's from India. You know, I get them from all over, and I'm, I'm happy for that. So good to good to see anybody from here from India or wherever they're from. You know, um, oh, he's one of your followers. Oh, how nice. Okay, great, great. Well, welcome to everybody that's coming in. You know, I appreciate the, when you come in that your followers come right with you. That I I appreciate that very very much. Um, Oh, you made sweet potato curry? I that sounds good, Erlene. Although I'm, you know, curry is not a, a delicacy that I really like very well because it's so a spicy. Of course, I suppose you could make it so it's not spicy, but it, it's really spicy, you know. Because I know how it is. When I lived in Hawaii, they had a lot of curry in Hawaii. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that stuff was so spicy you couldn't hardly eat it. Uh, oh, you got a rice for? Oh yeah, rice. Yep, rice varieties. Um, you use coconut aminos? Yes, I have heard of that. I have heard of that. I don't have any, um, but I've heard of that. But I've, I've been using this, and now um, I've just noticed that Walmart is starting to carry the, carry this liquid aminos. I've got so much to use, I want to use it up first, but I probably could get some... Um, Oh, it wasn't too spicy? Well, that's good, Erlene, because I know that... <laughs> uh, hi, Barnes. Good to see you. I'm doing some vegan gravy. I know that curry can be really 
um, spicy. You know, at least they wasn't Hawaii. It was really spicy. They put a lot of, you know, stuff in it that, I mean, I was walking around drinking a lot of water because I couldn't take it. Uh, oh, you put it, okay. I think, yeah, I think that's right you did. Um, hi, good to see you, Barnes. Good to see you. Um, I'm trying to get this um, to get it to get it uh, to boiling, and then I'll and then it'll be thickening up as it as it cools. It'll thicken up. Um, I'll just keep whisking it so it doesn't and get all the lumps out of it. This is a simple gravy because it doesn't have that much that many ingredients in it. It has the flour and it has. Uh, I'll give you the. Good. <laughs> I know. I know you meant Karen, but I, I know you. <laughs> I know that you made that. Uh, you what you said. That's okay, Barnes. I do the same thing all the time. I end up saying want to type somebody's name in, and I end up saying something else. You know, it. I stupid old uh, spell check can be a a bugaboo sometimes. Um, <laughs> yeah, typo. I get a lot of them myself, so don't worry about it. You know, it happens. It happens. You know, I get a lot of typos, too, when I'm ty typing back in a message, and people look at me and think, well, what the heck was I trying to say anyway, you know? <laughs> so, but, you know, I'm one of these kind, the simpler the better. If you don't have to put a lot of time or effort into it, that's what I, I, I like, because I don't like putting a lot of time and effort into, into making things. If you can make them simple, why not? Um, I know it does me too. My goodness, sometimes it it'll correct it, but it corrects it the wrong way. It'll give you a word you didn't even ask for. <laughs> oh, I know. So do I. So do I. Are uh, early, and I use almond milk pot just about in every all my recipes. Although this called for uh, um, vegetable broth, and I used organic vegetable broth. Um, so I yes, I use almond milk a lot. You know, but yeah, the, <laughs> that autocorrect can be horrible sometimes. I've, I've tried to type a word, and it'll end up putting something else up there that I didn't want. And I thought, well, where'd that word come from? You know. <laughs> oh, yes, I do, too. I use unsweetened almond milk. Now, I do have vanilla almond milk. However, I put that in my cereal. I would rather use the unsweetened for my recipes, and I save that for my cereal because it makes the cereal taste a little bit better. So um, that's what I use that for. Um, and I did make some pancakes this morning for breakfast. I didn't didn't have a chance to scope them, but I did put the recipe up on Facebook in my in my, in my group. So if you haven't been to the group yet to see the see the uh, um, pancakes that I made this morning, go check them out. Um, I they were um, vegan chocolate chip, and they came out really good. They tasted good. That's why I'm not real real hungry right now because they were humongous pancakes, and I had three big ones. Uh, Oh, you just, you just told the recipe? Okay. Um, but I try to put up everything up there as much as possible, you know, because uh, a lot of people want to be able to try to make the things that I've made and Erlene's made. So, and I'll post this up there on Facebook too um, because it it helps. It helps. A lot of people, you know, like new recipes, and I like making new recipes, making new things because it's a lot of fun. Especially looking for recipes. I look for recipes a lot. I mean, my goodness, it's so much fun to look for recipes that, you know, I never know from one day to the next what I'm going to be making. I couldn't decide when I was standing here in the kitchen, what am I going to make today? What do I really want to make? But I just thought, well, I might as well make this vegan gravy. Um, even if I have done gravy before, it doesn't, ma doesn't matter because I know Alexis, she she does a lot of her, when she scopes, she makes a lot of omelets and different things. So I thought, well, she makes the same thing pretty much, so I can do the same thing. So <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll make this vegan gravy. It's simple enough. And, um, oh, my goodness. Oh, yes, you better get some sleep. Oh, yes, you better get some sleep. My son right now is over in Israel, and um, he's got to adjust the time there for a few more days, then he gets to come home. Um, oh, done with studies. Yeah, my son, my son is over over in uh, Israel, and yesterday um, he went to uh, Bethlehem. But the tour guide there in Bethlehem, because it is um, Palestinian rule, he could not 
give them the tour. He could both be along, but he could not give them the tour because he's a Jew. He's a Jewish uh, um, tour guide, and so they didn't didn't permit that. So he uh, he said it's kind of scary to go into into places like that where the Palestinians have, have rule over it, and you got to be very very careful. Um, today is Hanukkah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's that's right. I think it is. Well, we got you know. For the Americans, Christmas coming up. You know, some celebrate Christmas and some don't. But, it, you know, that's neither here nor there. You know. Um, what is PayPal for? Don't you have to, don't have to worry about that. That is, I have that on there. Um, sometimes people will donate and sometimes they don't. I don't ask for it. I've got it there, but I do not ask for it. Nor do I ask for super hearts. But they are, they're there as well. I'm getting close to my... My goal of 185,000 because it's taken me a long time to get them, and I wanted to, <laughs> wanted to get them pretty soon so I can see if I'm going to get paid if they're going to pay me for it. Some you know, sometimes people have trouble getting their money, but I I think I'll, it'll be okay. I'm getting enough replay viewers now, but I don't ask for those. I don't ask for any money in PayPal. My good friend Erlene, she's in here. She is she has donated through PayPal a few times. She gives me super hearts as well, and God bless her for doing that. You know, I just don't ask for that stuff because I feel if people want to give it, they'll give it. Um, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I I just feel I just feel that I'm not in here to get super hearts. Um, I I want to I I come in here to show people how to cook healthy. Whether I get super hearts or not is immaterial. When I get them, I'm real happy for them, but I don't beg for them. Some do, and I don't beg for them. You know, so if they don't want to give them to me, that's fine. I'll, I'll, you know, I can, I can, I can be, be okay without them because I'm getting so close to my goal now, a little less than five thousand to go before I get them. So, and I'm thankful for that. Um, yes, it is starting to thicken right now. Um, I don't know if you can tell it through the. It's starting to thicken. Let me look at my thing here. I'll bring it over here. Um, I think I have to leave it. Until the gravy thickens, it has to thicken. I think it's starting to thicken right now, and I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, so once I, one time, I'll turn it off the heat. Okay. And once it starts thickening, and then, then uh, once it cools, it's one of these kind that once as it cools off, it thickens, and it's boiling right now. So I'm going to take it off the heat. And I'm going to put my, put my this down and I'll sit my pan on here and then I can hold this up just a little bit there we go there we go what does it consist of I will tell you um, it has I've got two cups of vegetable oil or vegetable broth um, Three-fourths teaspoon of onion powder, three tablespoons of nutritional yeast, one tablespoon of soy sauce, and I use the soy sauce alternative. I use liquid aminos. There's also coconut aminos, which I do not have. I left out the Dijon mustard because I'm not in favor of that, and three-quarter, or, yeah, a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. As this, as this cools, it's going to thicken. As you can see, it's, it's, it's a pretty good consistency right now. I probably should have put it on the stove maybe a little bit longer but we'll see if it's going to thicken to not i'll just put it back on the stove but it should start thickening up as it as it starts cooling so we'll that's basically that's basically all there is to making this gravy it's simple enough it's not hard to make it's it's real easy to do and um i, I make it because i want other people to learn how to make it too you, you know you just have to uh be willing to try it you know I've had a few few mistakes on some of my recipes that I've done that haven't been very good. They haven't turned out as good as they should. They ended up being a flop like my, my donuts the other day, but I made some new, new ones yesterday, and they turned out real good. So I think I may, I might have to put this maybe back on the, I'll put it back on the stove for a little bit, and I'll put this back down and see if it starts thickening. Put it back down. Whoa, don't want to turn my thing too far. I don't want my thing falling over it loves to fall over and we'll see if it's going to thicken up because i want to make sure it gets good and thick 
So it takes it takes time to get it thick because I had to get it boiling and get it thickening. And I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep whisking it until it starts thickening. I want to make sure it's gonna get good and thick. Um, but anyway, this is simple to make. It doesn't take it doesn't take a much effort. Very few ingredients, and it should all taste really good. You know, because you put it on baked potato, put it on mashed potatoes. You can put it on on well, you could probably put it on veggies or whatever you wanted to put it on. You could put it on anything you you wanted to put it on. You know. Just, you know, use your imagination, really. you got to use your imagination and, and do with it as you choose to. I'm going to put this on, probably have mashed potatoes later, and put it on mashed potatoes. Oh, I may even, I may even uh, bake a potato and put it, on, put it on that. It's good on baked potato as well. You just have to, like I said, use your imagination and, and you know, let your imagination run wild. Oh, this... This was this is liquid aminos. This is the soy sauce alternative. That's what I that's what's in here. Um, you called for soy sauce or tamari, which I don't have either one, but I don't use actual soy sauce. So I wanted to and I do buy liquid aminos. Walmart seems to carry it now. I've noticed that. They've been carrying the liquid they've been carrying the liquid aminos. And uh, some people use coconut aminos instead of liquid aminos. It's your preference. I've got plump Plenty of liquid aminos sitting here. I'm going to use them up. And then I'll probably get um, coconut aminos after after I um, get down to the last. Because I've got two two bottles sitting in my cupboard, which I did not know I had. Two fresh, two brand new bottles. So, um, so it's going to take me a while to use this up. So, um, But this is a simple recipe. It's um, starting to thicken. It's still boiling, but I'll get it thick. But it's, it's just... It's a very, very simple recipe, one that everybody can do if uh, they choose to do it. And you don't have to stand over the, the stove too awful long to do it. You know, just just keep keep working at it, keep, and it'll thicken up. Just keep going at it, and it'll, and it'll get there. That's what the whole idea of the flour is, because without flour in it, it will not thicken up. I could have probably used tapioca flour. I could have used arrowroot as well. But I decided to use the all-purpose flour. It's whatever you have in your counter. I've got, I've got tapioca flour, and I also have arrowroot. So I could have, I forgot. I was going to use arrowroot, and, I, and then I forgot, and I just use the all-purpose. But it's fine. It's going to, it's going to start thickening. I'm just going to keep stirring this until it starts thickening. I want to make sure it's going to get thick because I don't want to take it off of here until it thickens up. But make your own foods because if you make your own foods, you'll know exactly. Um, no, I've made gravy before, just not this recipe. I have made other gravy before, just not this particular one. I've, I've made cheese sauce before. I've made um, firm cheese before, um, where you can cut it, and and I've also made uh, cheese that you can melt. Well, some of the firm cheese I've made, you can melt it. You know, the cheese sauce that Erlene and I like has potatoes and carrots in it, which is a real good cheese sauce. Um, I've got that recipe, too. I haven't made that in a long time. I'm going to have to go back to making that again because I, I love macaroni and cheese. I will not eat the cheese in the store. Absolutely not. I will not eat the cheese in the store. It's going to have to be make my own cheese, vegan cheese, or, or I won't have anything at all because you, you don't want to eat that stuff because the stuff in the store, it's not good for you. you don't, it's got all kinds of stuff in it that you really don't want, you know, Stuff you don't want to put in your body. I know I don't. I don't want to put stuff in my body that isn't good for me. I would, you know, if I make it myself, at least I know what I have in it. That's the thing. You 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 have you know exactly what's in it. You and you you uh, can look at your recipe and say, oh yeah, this is what I put in it. You don't have to worry about chemicals harming you or anything like that. It's it's just you know you have to be so careful what you put in your body because. Um, oh yes, we do. We do eat mac and cheese. Like I said, we make our own cheese. We make our own cheese. I don't buy the cheese in the store. I make my own cheese. I do not. I do not buy the cheese in the store. I will not do that because it's is you. You know. Oh hi, Vanita. Good to see you. Welcome. I'm trying to get this to. Thicken up. I may add just a little bit of arrowroot. I have fl I have flour in here, but I may just put a little bit of arrowroot in here to kind of help it along. Uh, I think it's going to start thickening now. Um, 
it's hard to tell with with this but I'm just keep stirring it to make into because you have to it has to start thickening and it does take a while to thicken but good to see you Benita I wondered if you got the notification because sometimes the notifications don't come through like they should and uh, I know I have the problem sometimes I don't always get the notifications either but um, I'm glad you got the notification and you came in. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of arrowroot in there. I think I put put up I put the regular flour in there, but I think I'll put just a little bit of arrowroot, and that might help it along just a little bit. And you can use your, your better judgment. You don't have to do what I'm doing. Arrowroot powder is real good for as a good thickening agent. So I should use that instead of flour in the first place. I think it'll work real well now. Keep stirring this around to get it all melted. Get it so it's not lumpy. Get it, uh, that's the hardest part when it starts boiling like that. Put that in there and you gotta get rid of the lumps. Let's see if I can get rid of the lumps. Just as, that's why I'm just keep stirring and stirring and stirring. It'll get eventually get, eventually get rid of the lumps. <laughs> Because I don't see it thickening up, and I thought maybe the maybe the wasn't enough flour, so I added a little bit of arrowroot. Or arrowroot or tapioca is real good for for thickening up your gravy. Maybe if I leave it sit now, I like put it over here and leave it sit, it might it might start thickening. I'm just gonna, I don't think I'm going to add a little more any more arrowroot. I think it's got plenty now. Oh yeah, it's starting to thicken now. I can see it. It's thickening. Yes. It finally is. It's finally thickening. It really is. So I think that arrowroot did the trick. It's starting to thicken right now. Yep, it is. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. I'll put it over here. And I'll set this back up a little bit. So you can, there we go. Now, it's... I'm just going to leave it sit and cool off. Though it'll it'll thicken as it cools, um, but it looks. I think it looks real good, with the exception maybe of the few lumps on the um, um, trying to get the um, arrowroot, so it's not so lumpy. You know, I should have put that in there instead of the flour in the first place. But you know, it's trial and error. You know, that's basically what. Because it took a quarter cup of flour, and I just wanted to add a little arrowroot to it. But it looks pretty good. I mean, it's starting to thicken. It's it's getting it's getting real thick. So, but anyway, um, this is a very easy recipe to make. It's one that I'm sure that everybody's going to want to make. You're going to, you're going to enjoy making it because it's not hard. Um, you don't have to stand over your stove for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. You know, I didn't stand over the stove very long. As you can see, it, it's, and it's already starting to do its work. You want it to thicken up. It'll thicken as it's, as it's, as it sits there. So, but I like. I got coming in here and, and making things for you. Because I never know when I come in here what I'm going to make. I, I could, couldn't could decide. Now, what am I going to make when I come in here? I had several things on my mind. But I thought, nah, I'll just make the gravy because it's easiest to make. And it doesn't take very long. And I knew that you guys would might like might want to see a little of how I make the gravy. And it, it's going to turn out. It's going to be okay. It's going to taste real good. It's, prob it's probably... A lot different than the other uh, vegan gravy I've made before. And I can't even remember what that one was. But I've made vegan gravy before. It's just not the same. Not the same consistency. Oh, yeah. It's starting to... Th it, it's thickening. Yes. You can see... You can see in here how it's thickening. It's, it's thickening right up. See, as it sits, it thickens. And that's what you want it to do. And I'm going to stir this a little bit more to get the lumps out of here from the arrowroot. But it's thickening right up. And that's exactly what you want it to do. As, I, as it cools, it'll thicken. And that's what I like about this. Because it's very, real, real simple. You don't have to wait for it to get real, real thick as it starts thickening. Just take it off your, your stove and it'll thicken as it cools. Um, and that's simple. Very, very simple. Um, I don't know where everybody's at today. But they must be, they must be watching uh, George... Uh, George H. W. Bush's memorial thing. He's got a, his funeral's tomorrow, but they must be watching that. ABC News is, is periscoping about the, him lying in state in the in the rotunda of the Capitol. And I was watching it a little while ago, but it's the same old thing. You're watching people file past, you know. And I thought, 
This is, <laughs> I don't need to see this, you know. It's sad that he died, but, you know, we don't live forever. You know, I guess from my daughter, what my daughter told me, they decided to, to, um, yeah, I know. My daughter told me that they decided not to, not to deliver mail tomorrow because of his funeral. I have never heard of that before. For a, a one that used to be president and because of his funeral, they're not going to mail tomorrow. That makes no sense. You know what it is? They just want all the days off they can get. That's the point. If they can have another day off, that's what they want to do. They want to take a day off. They don't need days off. Look how many days they take off as it is. They get so many government days off as it is now. And then they want to take another one off. I mean, it makes no sense. It's not a holiday or anything like that. But because of his funeral tomorrow, they're, they're going to... And I never... I don't know how, where my daughter... She must have heard it on the news or something. And when she told me, I thought, oh, great. No mail. <laughs> it's crazy. Just no, I don't know if the banks will even be closed tomorrow. I don't know if they're going to close all the government offices, but... When she told me there was no mail, I thought, that is kind of stupid. You know, I mean, I, I feel for the family and everything, you know, what they're going through. You know, but he was 94 years old, too. You know, I just I just think this whole thing of closing everything up or, you know, no mail tomorrow because of his funeral makes no sense to me. I mean, just They just want an extra day off. Oh, he did. Oh. He gave it to them. Oh, well. <laughs> Thank you, Donald Trump. <laughs> Gee whiz. Oh man, I think it's I think it's 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 crazy. You know, there's an extra day that they're they're taking off that's not necessary to do, but it is what it is. You know, you can't do anything about it. They've decided to take tomorrow off and you know, gotta deal with it, you know. I think it's it's you know, I often wondered, boy. Wouldn't it be wouldn't it be fine to be a government worker? You get all these kind of days off, whether, <laughs> whether you need them off or not. Look how many, like I said, look how many holidays they get off a year. You get Thanksgiving and they get Christmas off, and some of them get, um, well, they get Memorial Day off. Some get off uh, Veterans Day, I think, and some of the schools take off Veterans Day. I think they don't. I don't think they deliver mail on Veterans Day, if I can remember. So many days they take off. You got your, you know, New Year's. You know, President's Day, they take those off. My goodness, what gives? Uh, oh, my goodness, 25 and a half years. Yes, I guess it is out of respect. You know, they wanted, to, they wanted to be respectful. But somebody, it was so it was so odd when I was watching that ABC News coverage on Periscope of the, uh, of him, lying in state there in Washington, somebody come on and start bringing Trump into the whole thing. Well, a bunch of us said, this is not respectful. You're disrespectful to the family. Why bring Trump into this? This is not about him. Because somebody, somebody says, well, I won't vote for Trump or I don't like Trump, you know, and all this. And I thought, I told the guy, I says, who cares? This isn't about him anyway. This is about the Bush family. You got to respect the Bush family and what they're going through. This is a sad, sad day for them. And then to bring Trump into it, I mean, people are, uh, you know, disrespectful as can be. And it's sad. It is very, very sad to be so disrespectful. Why do they have to be that way? You know, I don't understand it, you know. And uh, before I came in here, I checked, and they were still on, uh, ABC News was still on Periscope. And when I came in, they'd already had 26,000 viewers. So you can imagine how many viewers they're going to have before they get off. An awful, awful lot. Uh, <laughs> Man, if I only ever got that many, but I got twenty six thousand viewers. It didn't it didn't show very many at the bottom, but they were kept, the viewership kept going up and up and up and up until twenty six thousand. Like I said, I don't know what they have now, but I can imagine they have quite a few. Um, oh, they were, he was invited to the funeral, but not to speak. Now that's something, you know. I don't know if he'll show up or not, you know. I'm sure Obama will be there. Um, of course, we know that his son will be there because that's his that that was his dad. But we know um, I don't know how many others are going to be there that are you know are still alive if they're all going to be there or not. You know, Carter's going to be there. Who knows? Clinton probably will be. You know, it, you know when a dignitary like that dies, they really make a big hoopla about it. 
you know, <laughs> you and I, you and I, we're just common people. No, nobody, no, no, nobody knows anything about us when we die. Boy, boy, let a president die, and there's a big to do about it. Oh, all the ex presidents. I, I'm great, thank you. All the ex presidents. Well, that's that's good, you know. So that'd be Obama and Carter and Clinton. Um, oh, I made some gravy. As you can see, it's already, it's it's thickened up. I had to put it back on the stove a little bit to get it thicker. But it's thickened up, and as it cools, it gets thicker. It's a vegan gravy. Um, oh, that's right. World War II, absolutely. I forgot about that. But you know, he's 94 years old. He wasn't doing very well. He had a service dog. Um, and uh, so, and, and I watched um, Barbara Bush's funeral, and he looked terrible when she passed away, and that was in April of this year. He looked like death warmed over then. He, they, um, George W. Bush wheeled him out in, in his wheelchair. And I thought, right then and there when I saw him, I said, well, he isn't going to live very much longer. And I think the thing of it was after she passed away, he kind of, he probably lost our will to live anymore. You know, he was ready to go. You know, so he's lived seven months past her. And now, now it's his, now he's gone. So, you know, and I feel bad for George Bush. I mean, he's lost both of his parents now. You know, and that's hard to take when you lose both of your parents in the same year, you know. But they were both in their 90s. They lived their life. So, you know, and, I, and, and I'm sure that, he, that uh, you know, he'll be able to cope and he'll go on and, not, and everything, you know. And, and you have to, you know, and just do what he normally does. And, and you know, it's going to be hard to be without his dad, I'm sure. It's probably hard to be without his mom, but now... Um, that he's gone. It's going to be hard to be without him for a while, but I think he'll do okay, you know, but it's, it's, it's so sad. I, I hate to see stuff like that happen, but it does happen. I mean, life goes on no matter what, you know, we all, we all lose loved ones and we still have to go on any, anyway. And it's, it's very difficult, but you know, <laughs> that's life, you know, so far my son is doing really well. He's, um, He's over there, and like I said, he's over in Israel. He's he has to be careful where he goes. He's been. He said the trip has been a wonderful trip so far. Um, how many? I don't remember how many he had. I think he had a total of six children. I think they said. Um, I know he had George, but I don't. I'm really not really sure. I would have to Google that because I'm not really sure. He had six kids. He has some daughters too. So. Um, Oh, yes, that's exactly right. Yes, they were very, very close. George W. Bush was very close to his father and his mother, you know. And that is the hardest part is when you lose a loved one that you're very, very close to. You know, I'm real close to my son. I'm, of course, I'm not saying I'm not close to my daughter. But since my son lives here and my daughter lives in another state, I talk to her every day. But I'm a lot closer to him as far as as doing things and being there for him and stuff or him being here for me i'm a lot closer to him because we're, we live in the same state you know and that's why I'm, I, I worry about him being over in israel that he's going to be getting into an area where they're not allowed to go although he, they were told from the beginning where they can go and where they can't go because if they go into an area that they that uh, the united states um will not protect them they're going to get they could get in trouble so um Yes, he did. He had six kids, but as to how many boys and how many girls he had, I don't know. But I did hear that this morning. They said he had six kids. So, uh, you know, but they also they also lost a daughter, I guess, when she was three years old. They talked about, was it Rosie or something was her name? Something like that. I heard that mentioned yesterday that they lost a daughter when she was three years old. So... So they actually, and I don't know if she's the one, if she's been included in the six kids or, or they didn't include her or not. So I don't really don't know, but I know she, he had a total, of, he had six kids. So, um, I'd have to Google that one, but I know they, they lost a child at the age of three. Um, he's loving it. He said, <clears throat> he's really loving it because he gets to go in, in places that <clears throat> we all dream about. He used to walk down the streets that, that Jesus walked on. And he showed some pictures on Facebook. And all their streets in that are cobblestone. 
you know, and their buildings are, are, you know, they're ancient, they're built, you know, he was showing something on one of the Facebook pictures he posted, he, he posted up yesterday, he said it was something that, and I don't remember what exactly what it was, but it was something that Solomon had built, and it's still standing, so can you imagine how old that would be, you know, King Solomon of the Bible, wow, for it to still be standing yet, whoa, I mean, yes, he's, he's where a lot of people would like to go, you know, I know I'll never get there, but just the fact that he got to go as good is fine and is good enough for me because when he posts those pictures on Facebook, what I do is I I picture myself, I close my eyes and picture myself there with him and what it looks like. He like I said, he did get to ride a boat on the Sea of Galilee the other day. He was in Jerusalem this morning. Um of course we know they're ten hours ahead, so he's probably asleep right now. Um but he's, like I said, that Bethlehem was a Palestinian rule, so they they had to be careful. And I was so worried when I heard they was going to Israel because of the, they could be a, 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 an outbreak there or an uprising. Um, absolutely, he is. He's living his dream because it's a dream that I think that anybody would love to have. I would love to have that myself. I would have loved to be able to go to Israel. But the only way he got to go was that it was paid for him. Somebody from the church, and I don't know who it was, paid for him to go. Um, and so he thought he would take him up on it and he would go. You know, otherwise he would never get there because he couldn't afford it. The person that paid for him is well-to-do, has a lot of money, so thought that it would be beneficial for him to go. Since he is the elder of the church, they thought that he would send him. Um, okay, do, okay, Pauline, let's see. Uh, Pauline Bush, uh, okay, let me see. Here. Oh, she's included in the six. Pauline, I didn't know what her name was. I, th I thought her Rosie or something like that. Okay, so she's included in the six. That's okay. What did she die of? Did it say? Because I know they said she lost, They she was lost at three years of age. Um, how long has he been gone? He left Friday morning. You see, we li I live here in Eugene. He, kept, he took the... Um, Oh, leukemia? Wow, three years old. Um, he left five, he got on the airplane at 520 in the morning here in Eugene, come to the Eugene airport. It's a very small airport, but he flew out of here to Seattle, caught a plane there and went from Seattle to Portland. And then after Portland, um, he caught a big plane to go to Boston and he probably had a little layover there. And then from Boston to Istanbul and then Istanbul to uh, Tel Aviv. But uh, he's been gone Friday. He'll be coming back on Saturday. Right after we get out of church, my daughter-in-law will go pick him up. So actually, in essence, when he leaves from there, depending on what time he leaves now, it'll be our Thursday night. Because, you know, with, with them being 10 hours ahead, it'll be Thursday night for us, but Friday when he leaves from there. So um, take in consideration, he's got, those, he's got a long flight. He's got a nine-hour flight from Istanbul to Boston. And he's probably got a six to eight hour flight from Boston to Portland. So he's got two long flights there. The one from Tel Aviv to Istanbul is a very short flight because that's only about 700 miles. Because I, I, I Googled that one day because I was curious. I said, well, how far is Tel Aviv from Istanbul? It's 700 miles. But do you know something? The time difference is crazy. The, okay, Tel Aviv is 10 hours ahead of us. Istanbul is 13. So they're another three hours ahead of, of Israel yet. Um, yeah, jet lag when he gets back is right. My goodness. You know, he's not used to those real long flights. And I know that he's going to have a lot of jet lag. He's going to be doing a lot. <laughs> Saturday night, he's going to be probably go to bed early and want to get some sleep. You know, yeah, jet lag. Especially when you're on a real long flight, you can't move your legs. You can't get up and walk around because you have to have your seat belt. Well, you can take your seat belt off once they once they take off the seat, uh, turn off the seat belt sign. But normally, most people don't, unless you have to get up and you have to go to use their so-called restrooms. And I've been in them, and they're so small. I mean, <laughs> so unless you have to use that, or you have to go back to the galley to talk to them back there in the galley or whatever, you know. Other than that, you just stay in your seat. You can't move around. It's hard to sleep on those planes. I've tried it, and I can't. Hi, good to see you. Welcome. I can't sleep very well on a plane. I've tried it, and it's very, very difficult. I just, <laughs> you can't stretch your legs to speak of, you know, because there's not much room between you and the seat in front of you, you know. 
And I, I know that nine-hour flight from Boston to Istanbul had to be a rough one for his legs. Oh, my goodness. He probably <laughs> was so glad when he got off that plane to stretch his legs in the Istanbul airport. As, you, as I understand the Istanbul airport. Now, I haven't, I do not know from what, but, from, but did not know this, but my son had said the Istanbul airport is the biggest airport in the world. Um, is he tall? No, not real tall. He's over five, five, maybe five foot six, maybe something like that. Um, no, I don't even have an Instapot. I often thought about getting one, but I I have not run across, well, I've run across a few recipes that take the Instapot, but I thought for myself, is an Instapot worth it or not? You know, I don't know. I'd like to have one, but I'm not sure that I would really use it that much. Um, yes, it did. It certainly did. See how thick it is? Look at that. See it really thick? Look at that. See as it, as it sits, I left it long, long enough. See it's thick, start, starting to thicken? See it's it's really thick. As it cools off, it thickens. Yes, it's nice and thick. You want it thick. And they say that when you take it out of the refrigerator to rewarm it, and if it's too thick, you just add, you just add a little bit of water to it when you rewarm it up, you know, um, and that's all you have to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some potatoes for lunch. I'll probably make a baked potato and put this on there. It'll be so good. Uh, um, I do have a pressure cooker. I haven't used it in a long time, though. Um, Oh, you just got yourself an Instapot yesterday? Like I said, <clears throat> I've seen them at the store at Walmart and stuff, and I'm not sure. My my daughter-in-law wants an Instapot for Christmas, so my son's going to have to get her one of those for Christmas. So <laughs> those Instapots are not cheap. I don't need a real big one. I don't need the I don't, but the small one I wouldn't want either. You know, for me, I get, don't need a great big, huge one. But my daughter has got uh, an Instapot, and she loves it because you could do so much for, with it. You know, it's a pressure cooker, Instapot, rice cooker, and all that combined, I guess. Um, is the pressure cooker... Um, yes, I have made a vegan cheesecake. I've got a vegan cheesecake recipe. It should be in my Periscope long time ago, way back when. You'll just have to check my my res my uh, um, on my profile, but I do have a, a vegan cheesecake recipe that I've made a long time ago. Yes, I've, I've made cheesecake. I made a chocolate cake, um, well, carob cake, uh, or pie, actually, car carob pie with a graham cracker crust. I've made one of those. It was carob, carob peanut butter, I think it was. That was a real good pie. I've made that. I've made a bread. I've made zucchini bread. I've made um, the chocolate bread, uh, co carob bread. So I've made quite a bit, but I did make a cheesecake a long, long, long time ago. It's been a long time ago now. It's, um... Oh, you ate before watching my scope. So you're not so hungry now, are you? Well, you know, <laughs> looking at this gravy is really making me hungry. It really is. It's really making me hungry because I want to put it on my potato. But you can look. See how thick that is? It really got nice and thick. Just the way it's supposed to be. Oh, they have been making cheesecake. Yeah, I, as I understand, you can do a lot with an Instapot. Now, I have seen a few recipes on Pinterest for of her uh, where you use the Instapot. I haven't seen an awful lot, however. But I suppose if I start googling it, Google, googling it, or go on YouTube, I probably would find quite a few recipes. I don't know. Like I said, I. I know the Instapot is out there. I don't have one. Um, I'm not sure if I would ever use it very much, so I kind of hesitate getting it if I don't use it that much. But maybe if I can find something to use it for and then something I don't eat up and put it in the freezer, that would probably be okay too. Because I have some soup in the freezer right now that I made. Oh, man, it was been a while back. Um, I keep forgetting to get it out of the freezer in the morning so I can, start, so I can eat it for lunch. I keep telling myself i got to get it out. Because I knew I wasn't going to eat the whole thing because it was made in a in my Pampered Chef stock pot. With that, well, it come with that six uh, six uh, pot, pot and pan set. And it's, I think it's five quart. So I made it in there and I ate some of it, but I didn't eat it at all. And so I wanted to freeze it up. So I, I froze it up and it's still in the freezer yet. Um, 
Hi, good to see you. Welcome. Um, yeah, I know. I do have an old pre old pressure cooker. You're probably right. Um, I, I, like I said, uh, pressure cooker probably do the same thing as an Instapot, but my daughter swears by the Instapot. She just loves it, you know. So, and I guess they're quite popular. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about getting one, but then I'm not too sure. Yeah, you have to use what you have. That's true. You're right. I don't want to go and invest in an Instapot if I'm not going to use it very much. That's, that's the thing. Um, okay, what's the ingredients for the gravy? Okay, I'll tell you. I am going to post this up on my Facebook page, my, my vegans, Karen's Vegan Heaven. So I will post it up there so you'll be able to see it. Okay, it's got three cups of vegetable broth in it, three-fourths tea, teaspoon of onion powder, three tablespoons of nutritional yeast, um, one tablespoon of soy soy sauce, which I do not use soy sauce, but I use liquid aminos. Some have coconut aminos. I have Bragg's liquid aminos. That's it. It's a soy sauce alternative. Um, I left off the Dijon mustard because I don't care for mustard anyway. And then one quarter cup of all-purpose flour, which I, um, as it started, as it started cooking on the stove, then I started adding a little bit of arrowroot to it to kind of help it along. The arrowroot would make it thicken quicker than the, um, the, the regular flour, which I should have used, put that in there in the first place. But it thickened right up. See, look at that. Nice and thick. And that's the way you want it. See how thick? Just, you want, you want it thick. Because I do not like runny gravy. You put gravy on, on potatoes and, a, and a, you know, if you don't dig a well in the middle of the potato, it, it'll run off the sides of it, you know. I, I know it does, doesn't it? I can get a little bit of spoon and, hi, Jimmy, and taste it and see what it tastes like. Just a little bit, because I'm going to post this up on my Facebook page. So I want to... Wow. Very good gravy. Mm-hmm. You guys would like this. This is a very good flavor, Rick, gravy. Tastes very good. I guess the best gravy I've ever had. I am definitely going to make this again. I have had recipes that I, I made that flopped. And I don't make them again, but if they, if they turn out good, I'll make them again. Maybe not right away, but I will make them again. That's the way it works sometimes. Some of the recipes that you find, you think they're okay to make, but they end up, something's lacking them or something, and they're not as good as they, as they should be. And it's, 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 you know, it's terrible. I'm going to put this back on the stove again because I don't. Um, just, and, and they just don't work. They just don't work right, you know, and it's, and it's, it's terrible. They just don't, they just, you know, just like that donut recipe I made the other day. There's some, for some unknown reason, something wasn't right about it. It didn't, they fell apart and they come out of the pan. And I think what it was, instead of using flaxseed meal, I used regular flax seeds to make the flax egg. I should have ground the flax seeds up to make the meal, which that's what I bought them for so I could grind them up. And I didn't take the time and it didn't make a, a gelatinous egg like it should have. I think that's why it didn't, they didn't hold together. But I decided to make a new recipe yesterday and they turned out beautiful. Um, they taste real good. The cookies tasted real good too. Um, and it's a recipe that I'm going to make again whenever I'm hungry for donuts. Because you look at the donuts in the stores. They look so good, but they're so full of stuff that you shouldn't have like corn syrup and a lot of sugar in them. That my donuts don't have all that much sugar in them. They're just right. You don't need a lot of sugar. You know, it's got carob powder. That's healthier for you than cocoa powder. You know, and it's, uh, and, I, and the icing has got cocoa or uh, carob chips. So they turned out real, real good. They're they're very good flavor. My cookies, I had some of those. Those are good too. I made some oatmeal um, carob chip cookies yesterday. They turned out real good, very good, and I and I really enjoyed making them. Anyway, I don't look like I'm going to get any more on here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to close this Periscope up. I'm going to post this up on my Facebook page. And I'm going to go ahead and get my lunch ready. Make me some potatoes or get me a, a baked potato. I'm going to put this right on that baked potato and, and have fun eating it. Because it's good on a baked potato too. So 
Um, I'll come back in tomorrow. I'm not sure what I'm going to make tomorrow, but just keep waiting for, for me to come on. So with that being said, I, I thank you all for coming on, the live viewers now and the replay viewers later. And take care. God bless. Have a great day. And bye-bye.